Susan, was Let's Go Crazy written the same day in rehearsal at the warehouse that it was tracked? I would like to say yes, but I believe the answer is no. Because I, I, um, I think I have seen the existence of an earlier demo sure. of that song. Dwayne, you're nodding. Is that possible? Uh, this, I, I think there's another there's a demo with him doing it. Yeah. So I, I remember the day quite well of us uh, recording the song at the St. Louis Park warehouse through that console that we had just uh, hooked up. Uh, the prince had his rehearsal set up, and the mics that were on the stage would feed a splitter snake, which would go off to two consoles, a recording console and a monitor mix console. And a uh, long time, it's been a long time arranging all the parts. So the music, musicians all came up with their parts. And then they went home at the end of the day, and he and I stayed and uh, recorded that guitar solo. And I remember it was my first time, it was my first time uh, punching in. I just joined him, and now I'm moving from the technician chair to the engineering chair. And, so it was the two of us, and um, recording the guitar solo, and he makes a mistake. So he tells me, roll back, and I roll the tape back, and he's here standing with his guitar on, and I've got my hand on the remote of the tape machine, and we roll back, and he says, um, we're going to punch in. Okay, great. But I was new to engineering with him, and we're rolling along, and he's playing along, and I'm thinking, I'm not in record. Does he know I'm not in record? Uh, he's playing, and I should be in record. <sighs> Maybe I should be in court. I, I, he didn't give me a signal, but he's playing along. And I just went, dink, and I hit the record button. And he reaches over and went, dink, and s hit the stop button. And he says to me, who cued you? No, nobody. He said, roll back, watch my face, I'll cue you, and this is where we go in. And that started four years of my listening, with my hand on the remote, watching his face. And we got really good at it because where he wanted to go in, he'd start to raise his chin and he's going to come down on the downbeat. And you know, it's usually going to be at the end of a four bar, or eight bar section. So he'd be playing along and I just had to see this by the end of it, a subtle shift in his face. And I knew on the one is, is where you go in, unless there's a pickup and then you go in on the four and, but yeah, that was that he didn't fire me that day. I, I lived to record another day. And that was a really happy memory of doing this incredible piece. Incredible. Uh, I have one more fan question, but two questions I personally want to know, which Susan, David Z, Bill Jackson, the bed that was in here. Oh, yeah. Do you remember the bed? Oh, yes. And that was on all sessions? No. It, 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 well, once it was in, it was in, but, you know, it, it, it wasn't always there in the time that I was here. Uh, he also had a bed at the uh, Flying Cloud Drive warehouse at home. There was a small little room, and yeah. there was a, a mattress and a really cheap pink and white bedspread. Was the bed it, right here? And there was a bed here, yeah. No, but I mean in this It spot. was in this room, yeah, right, right, right in here, around. as I recall. Okay. It was up against that back wall there. Yeah. No headboard or anything like that. It was just the, the mattress and a box spring and a, and a bed spread. Uh, he, he liked lying on it to write, and I, I know he had said that he got it for Peggy so she could take naps, but how can you take naps when you're working with him? You're not going to take a nap. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you can go on the couch and the other thing if you're going to take a nap. Yeah, but, and yeah. you want him to walk out of the room right, and find you right, asleep? Right. No, I don't yeah. think so. Did, did, were you in here where there were weights, like weights in here? I don't remember weights. I remember them at the warehouse at rehearsal. Okay. I don't remember them okay. here at sunset. Somebody told me they were here. I don't know. Yeah. I don't remember that. Uh, Susan, how did Prince progress mentally, artistically, emotionally in the specific era that you were with him? Also, when was the last time you spoke with Prince? Okay, two questions. So the f first, um, he progressed pretty darn rapidly. Uh, when I joined him, he was... He was a star, but not yet a superstar. On the cusp. He was right there, and then shortly afterward, he became a superstar up there in the stratosphere. And I was with him as that plane reached that elevation and hit cruising altitude. And I was with him as long as it was still cruising uh, through sign of the times. Now the plane begins to descend afterward i'm taking zero credit for that but it just through happenstance happened to be that the years when i was with him he was um at the peak of his record sales um he changed very rapidly uh because he during that period he went from age 25 to 30 and um or thereabouts and that's an important period 
in a, in a young rock star's life, and music itself changed very rapidly. So there were a lot of changes for him there. When I met him in 83, I saw him wear jeans, if you can picture this. Blue jeans, I saw him in tennis shoes, white Converse high tops, as I recall. Never saw him, after Purple Rain, never saw him wear that again. The man mm. I knew was a star who came to this studio every day with his hair and his makeup and his perfume or cologne and his, his clothes and his matching boots. And by the end, I believe, he was a star who was contemplating the best way to be effective and relevant in a new musical world. Yeah, that happens a, very rapidly in music. He was a marketing genius. Like mm. even later on in the '90s and 2000s, how he would get people to the shows and how he would do his releases. I mean, it wasn't just an artist, and he'd give it away to the managers to figure it out. Like he was very instrumental oh, in yeah. doing there was everything. This, and there was a second question there. When was the last time yes. I saw him? I believe it might have Sorry. been 1995 at Glam Slam in Minneapolis. I was on the road with Tommy Jordan over here, the band Gagita. We were on tour, and we went to Glam Slam. And he was there. That was the last time I saw him. I saw him several times after leaving him, but that was the last time. And he was there, and, and it was warm, and, and we talked. And he said he was going to New York that night, and he invited me to come with him. And I, I said, I can't. Uh, I'm, I'm on the road with a band. I appreciated the invitation. I always felt, um, you know, I've always felt this, this great affection for him, love for him. And... Um, it was kind of easy to do. I mean, not immediately after leaving him. There were a couple of rough moments there. He chewed me out for the most recent Wendy and Lisa album that he disagreed with, and it wasn't my fault. So <laughs> we had some <laughs> tense moments. But after, after that, uh, it was warm and affectionate, and, and there was love there. Yeah. He had matured, too. Uh, and yes. He was tired a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah. And music had shifted so much from the 80s to 95 to 2000. It's just, it just has to be tiring to try to compete still. Mm -hmm. 